Today we're going to talk about physical and chemical properties and changes. So first of all, let's talk about physical properties. Those are things that we can determine about a chemical without changing the structure of a substance. So things like color, which we can just look at, odor, which you can just smell, hopefully by wafting the chemical towards you, not by sticking your nose down in a test tube. Um, things like density, where we're just measuring mass and volume, those don't change the, the chemical uh, structure. Boiling point and melting or freezing point, and we'll talk a little bit more about those. With chemical properties, those properties have to be determined by actually changing the chemical structure. So things like reactivity, if we want to figure out the reactivity of something, the way to do that is to react it with something. Things like pH, flammability, so we'd have to burn the substance, or heat of combustion. So there are lots of different properties. These are just a few. Let's talk a little bit about chemical and physical changes. A physical change is a change where the identity of the substance is not changed. It may end up looking different because uh, we'll talk about some examples of physical changes and I'll give you an example of that. But the chemical composition of it does not change. So with physical changes, dissolving and dilution are always physical changes. So if you take some salt and you dissolve it in water, the appearance of the salt changes. It's no longer the little white crystals that you had in the salt shaker. It becomes colorless. It's dissolved in the water so you can no longer see the crystals. But what happens is you can still taste it and taste that it's salt. Or if you have dilution, say you went to Bojangles and got your sweet tea on the way to school today, and you left it sitting in your first period class. So when you go back to get it, your ice is all melted, your tea is weak, uh, it's diluted. The water from the ice that melted has diluted it. It's still tea, it's still sweet, but diluted. Also, physical changes are phase changes. So you're probably familiar with melting and freezing, the transition from solid to liquid and liquid to solid. So if you think of ice melting, Ice looks different in solid form than it does in liquid form and, and so on. Um, there's also condensation and vaporization. Condensation is when a liquid becomes, I'm sorry, when a gas becomes a liquid. Vaporization is when a liquid becomes a gas. And there are two you're probably not familiar with, sublimation and deposition. Sublimation is when a solid becomes a gas. It skips that melting and liquid phases. And then uh, deposition is when a gas becomes a solid. So let's talk about the chemical and physical changes. A chemical change is a change where the chemical makeup of a substance is changed, and so the identity of it is changed. Once you change its chemical structure, it's no longer the same thing. And the way that we tell that a chemical change has occurred is we look for these five things. The first would be an unexpected color change. So let's say you have a clear green liquid and you add it to a clear colorless liquid, something that looks like water. If you put those together and it turns bright purple, obviously that's an unexpected color change. Now, if you put those together and it turns lighter green, that would be an expected color change. That would be what you would expect to happen because you're just diluting it. So the unexpected color change would be the indicator that there's been a chemical change. There's also something called a precipitate that can form when you put two solutions together. So a precipitate is a solid that forms when you put solutions together, uh, when there's a chemical reaction that occurs. And what happens is if you put two clear colorless solutions together, uh, they form a cloudy solution. It looks, oh, it can almost sometimes look opaque, white. Uh, if you have a colored solution, it may be opaque and, and whatever color it was, say green or uh, from the earlier example. So it would turn kind of cloudy and opaque. You can also have formation of a liquid or a gas. Typically you'll see a gas uh, in this class when we see things in our labs and that sort of thing, but liquids can also be formed. And when, we'll see, when we see a gas form, typically what we'll notice is bubbles forming in the solution. So if you've ever seen uh, baking soda and vinegar mixed together, those bubble profusely. So if you haven't tried that before, try it at home tonight. Make sure you do it over the sink or your mother will kill you.
So the other two, one is the absorption or release of heat. So when something releases heat, we call that exothermic. And exo meaning out of, thermic meaning heat. And so when you're holding the test tube or the beaker that has the reaction going on, what is happening is you'll feel it getting warmer. So it would start at room temperature and you would feel it getting warmer. Don't confuse that with something that's being heated, like on a hot plate or a Bunsen burner or something like that. In that case, heat is being added to it, so not being created by the reaction in the, the beaker or the test tube. The absorption of heat is called endothermic. Uh, endo meaning into, so heat is going into the reaction, and so you would actually feel that getting colder. If you've ever used one of those little ice packs where you uh, squeeze it and pop it and shake it and it starts to feel cold, that's absorbing heat. That's why we feel it getting cold. The last one, but not least, is the production of light. If you've ever seen fireflies when they flash uh, their little tails, there's a chemical reaction going on there that's generating that light in their tails. Uh, so just uh, the, think, of, think of some other examples, if you can, of things that you're familiar with that might have these indicators of chemical change. That's the end of the video, and I will see you in class.